budget uh, in the second meeting of April, which will be a great step forward for us. It'll be the first time since my election uh, that we will have the budget turned in and approved prior to the end of the fiscal year, and that's been a goal myself and the committee this year. So thank you, committee, and uh, we'll keep working at it. Yeah, and I just want to thank everyone. I, I know everybody's gone over their budget and gone over their budget and cut back, and, and everybody really stuck to the timelines pretty much. So thank you all for your hard work. Okay, we'll move on to Public Works, Trustee Washington. Basically, tomorrow night we have a Public Works meeting. Tomorrow night is our regular schedule meeting, and uh, we are working on a timetable for street repair and stuff that uh, currently looking at to see what kind of how much we have to do how much money is available so instead of getting as far behind as we got before hopefully we can keep on top of it from now on so. and have a ongoing schedule right that's right. all i have right now okay public safety trustee here um <clears throat> two things we've got spring coming which means of course severe weather and i'd like to discuss with Mr. Banco, the possibility of us doing some type of a severe weather educational program to either be published or put it into a handout. Uh, we've all got weather, severe weather, the storm spotting classes coming up. And then, B, now that it's getting warmer out and we're coming into daylight savings time, we're going to have more kids outside playing. I think we all need to really pay attention to our speeds in the street and uh, start watching out for kids and bikes and scooters. And, Skateboards. And it's, uh, I've seen a few close calls already. You know, cruising through town, but it might be something that we need to sit down and address with the police department as the weather strikes breaking. Right, I know I did talk to Officer Strang today for about a half an hour, and she was all about that. So, okay, that's great. That's my report. Okay, and you brought up another good reminder for everyone. Uh, this coming weekend is when we do spring forward. We have to turn yeah, those flags forward. So it's great to have the sun, but we lose an hour on the weekend. Okay, what then is in open spaces? Trustee Duberstein? We had our um, committee meeting a week ago Thursday. Uh, we went over the budget. Um, we've decided that we're gonna hire a knowledgeable person to help with the weeding of the entrance at 134. It um, is such a big undertaking, especially because there are two um, vacant lots on either side that blow their seats into our garden and make it really difficult to deal with. So she's going to be working each week trying to keep the weeds under control. Uh, there was some concern expressed by uh, the members about the encroaching on the woodlands by residents along the Cranberry Lake path. So we're going to be talking about what kind of uh, things we can do to remedy that. And our next meeting will be the first Thursday in May. All right, but Georgian, I just wanted to bring up um, uh, everyone should be in receipt of the minutes from the January wetland meeting that was distributed by the clerk via email. And a question did come up to me, and I just want to clarify for the record that um, there was discussion about the trees, the dead trees in the area of the bike path. Oh, yes. By, by Washington. So yes. the question came up. I just want to acknowledge that is Lake County DOT property. So. Um, right. We understand that, but the question was um, what can be done because there, it's breaking the fences that are, that are along our residents' property because they're so close to the fence, so I wasn't sure what we could do about it. Yeah, I just wanted to say that we're going to, we are pursuing a cooperative effort with Lake County DOT, and um, it, if they can't send the manpower out to take care of it, we want to get a, a cooperative effort between Lake County DOT, Haynesville with volunteers, um, the Highline, Highland Lake Homeowners Association has been in contact with us. They want to send over their volunteers to do a cleanup for that area. Um, that They value that wetland area by the back path, bike path greatly because that's kind of a filter for their lake. 
And, and in fact, when that bike path was built, uh, Larry Leafblad was on the county board, and he, of course, lives in Highland Lake. He was very instrumental in getting the grant that did the dredging of that originally to clean that out. So um, any work that would be done in that area, it is Lake County DOT property, and I just wanted to clarify. The question was, were we hiring someone to, and paying someone to go work on the county property? So I just wanted to clarify that. But we're talking two different places. I mean, you're understanding that we're talking about along Washington, not where that um, creek goes under the bridge into Highland Lake. We're talking about along Washington Street. That's Lake County Park. Right, I understand. Yeah. yeah. And um, I talked to with Dave Coulter, and he wasn't sure that volunteers would be able to handle what's happened to that. Right, with the trees. Yes, with the trees. I, yes. No, but, no, no, with the, with the um, what Larry wants us to work on, Dave wasn't sure that it was something that, oh, that volunteers, that volunteers could, handle? could handle. Okay, well, then we're going to have to find out what Lake County DOT is going to do before we can go further. So I just wanted to clarify that for the record. And I think at Long Haynesville Road, too, I think there's some trees that are in the same position that they're right next to the uh, fence of some of the, one of the one of my committee members. Well, the fence, that you're talking about fence along the backyards of, mm -hmm. because that we did some removal already, didn't we, Jeff? We did some last year, yeah. So not all of them, some of them are larger, but a lot of the little fun form and thistle and what have you that was brought up against that we went back and tried and started removing some of them. But there is quite a bit left. I think there's some tree, I don't know if there are trees along Hazel Road, but they were talking about the trees for sure along Washington here. The trees. Yeah, we did do some work back there last spring. Well, when the weather gets a little nicer, let's walk it and take a look at it and see what we're talking about, what, what we can handle and what we should approach the county about. We'll put that on the public works area. We can do that. Mm -hmm. um, anything else for wetlands and open spaces? That's it. Yeah. Okay, community relations, Trustee Dionaski. Well, we had our first moving, our first movie, and uh, to limited success, we had uh, three people show up, a mother and her two children, to ET. We are looking forward to maybe a little bit better attendance for the next movie. It is this Sunday. It is the, the movie's called The Great Race. It is uh, an older movie, so we're looking to see what kind of demographics we get for that. And we also have planned the movie up for the April 10th showing, so we will be showing that here as well. Uh, again, it is free to all residents. We're serving popcorn. Come on down. We have a nice size screen. We have a great projector. And you can see a free movie and have some popcorn all on all on us. So please come and attend. It's at Movie Start at 2. And uh, just a quick reminder, we're not a babysitter service, so if you bring the children, please make sure you stay with your children. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to business. Uh, first item up is the security agreement, collateralized public funds. Who's taking the lead on this one? I'll do that. Um, as I mentioned a little earlier, um, when we were working on a draft uh, updated security agreement and uh, the, also the investment policy, uh, based on the comments that we received tonight from the Finance Committee, we're going to develop an ordinance for the April board meeting uh, that will have the, a combination of the revised policy and that security agreement, and um, we'll present that for adoption that night. To nothing to vote on tonight. Okay. Okay, the second item is an ordinance repealing uh, sections 9, no, I'm not going to read all these numbers, but <laughs> um, we're updating the village code and establishing regulations for the discharge of firearms and hunting. There's nothing dramatically being changed in this ordinance, but this code has not been updated for many, many years to really mirror the transformation from us being a rural farm community to a suburban type environment for the most part. And I am amazed at the number of inquiries that I have received 
over the past almost two years and that the clerk receives about hunting questions at both extremes. Those who want to make sure that no hunting is allowed and then also those who would like to go and hunt at Cranberry Lake. It's a little scary. So, we wanted to make it easier for them to find the answer when they go online and look at our ordinances or even when we're providing a copy. Right now you have to go to several different areas of the code and there's a little conflicting language that's kind of hard uh, and some people have challenged and our attorney has been able to explain it. But this just simplifies the whole thing, brings it up to date. Now it's my understanding that we don't have the latest version though, however. Right. There, um over the last 24 hours or so, we've made a couple of minor revisions based on conversations with the folks from the Northbrook Sports Club to clarify uh, that, that they can continue to do the activities that they do uh, and allow the discharge of firearms for sporting purposes. Um, and uh, what I would recommend, uh, if it's acceptable to the board, is uh, to uh, adopt the ordinance subject to final attorney review. Uh, again, those are the, there are two sentences that are changed, and it essentially just clarifies that the Northbrook Sports Club continue, can continue to do their, the activities that they do. The, the, the version that you have in front of you already states that the, if, if the sports club was interested in allowing hunting, they would have to get a special permit from the village, uh, from the board. Uh, they would not be uh, able to just grant hunting that's under the, the current use. Um, but they can, of course, continue to allow the, the activities that they have going there now. One question. It says single owner. What if, what if the single owner is a group? Does that change anything? You mean raise like gelatin? No, no, no. no. I said, it says in here a single owner. A oh, you mean if it's if the owner is a correlation? Or, yeah, that's okay, that's one, that's one. And that's still a state law. Yeah. Now, do you want me to run in the printer or uh, That's up to the board, I and mean, you certainly the board, do that. Would the board like to excuse the clerk for a moment so she can print the copy? Okay, yes. You don't feel anything? Okay. I'll put a cover if I put a fresh copy in everybody's mailbox, or I'll email it out to everybody tonight. Okay. Okay. We have a motion for approval. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Trustee Staranowski. Aye. Tiffany. Aye. Duberstein. Aye. Barrett. Daly. Aye. Washington. Aye. Ordinance number 11-3-144. And I'll put a copy and I'll email a copy out. Should, be, should that motion have read um, oh. as amended or as or final? I think subject to final attorney. Subject, subject to final subject to final attorney review. Review. Right, so I, okay, so Jerry. I, I move to accept that last statement. Okay. <laughs> and Gary. I'll still second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. Okay, at this time, I would like to ask for a motion to go into executive session. This will be for the purpose of executive session minute review. So, second. Roll call. Trustee Staranowski. Aye. Tiffany. Aye. Bruce Aye. Barrett. Aye. Bailey. Aye. Lockett. Aye. Uh, no, welcome to stay. I don't think we'll be too long. Uh, there's refreshments, and again, the newspapers up here. Anybody who wanted to take a look at the dictionary for the cow?